So the text for our meditation is from that reading that you heard Joyce read a little while ago, uh, especially the portion of these two verses that I have on the screen for you. God said to Abram, I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. On the basis of these words of Scripture, and in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who came to bless each one of us, my sisters and brothers in faith. Imagine, if you will, that two of your closest friends are able to get some really good seats for the Super Bowl. Of course, you're going to watch the game, but on that particular Sunday, you're much more interested in seeing if you can possibly spot your two friends than you are in watching the game. Every time the jumbotron, or whatever they call that technology, is panning the crowd, you've got your eyes peeled to see if you can see your two friends. And then comes that moment. It's panning the crowd, and you're sure you see them. And it seems that the camera actually pauses for a minute and focuses on them, and, and you know it's them, and you're so excited that you're calling out their names. It's like finding a needle in a haystack, finding the one, or in this case, the two, among the many. It's easy to get lost in a crowd. Remember these books? Where's Waldo? You know, with those big glasses he has on and that red and white cap, it was still hard to find him. It's easy to be lost in a crowd. The good news that we have today, that Scripture has for us, is that God is very good at picking out an individual from the crowd. 4,000 years ago, God looked at all the people on the face of the earth at that time. And he picked Abram. He chose him, and he promised to bless him, and he assured him that through him he would bring blessings to everyone. Many people believe that that is the fact that Abram is integral in the three great religions of the world, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And while that is true, we as Christians see his impact as much more important and vital than that. For while God was acting to bless this one man, he already had in mind the way that he would bless everyone. Abraham's call, or God's call of Abraham, was very personal. God said, I want you. But while it was personal, it was also universal. He wants all of us. In many ways, we are 
shaped by the communities in which we live. And by communities, I'm talking about all of our relationships. It might be our nuclear family. It might be our extended family. It's our communities, uh, probably the schools we attend, the places we go to work, our culture, uh, certainly the country that you're born into, all of these things go into shaping who we are. And that makes it easy to get lost in the crowd. And I have to say, certainly from my own perspective, and maybe you feel that way too, that there are times when you just as soon be lost in the crowd, that you're happy to blend in and not be noticed. In Thornton Wilder's play, Our Time, Our Town, excuse me, um, one of the characters recalls a friend of hers that received a letter. And the envelope was addressed like this. Jane Crawford, the Crawford Farm, Grover's Corners, Sutton County, New Hampshire, USA, North America, Western Hemisphere, the Earth, the Solar System, the Universe, the Mind of God. Can't you just picture Jane getting smaller and smaller? as she read that envelope, feeling more and more insignificant. And yet, at the same time, there was a blessing because it took her all the way back to God. It's much like Luke did in his genealogy of Jesus, in Luke chapter 3, you know that portion that you skip whenever you get to it? He begins at Jesus and goes all the way back. And the genealogy ends to Adam, the son of God. All the way back to the creator. We go from the individual through the crowds and the populace of all of the world and the universe, and we come back to the one who started it all, the Creator God, who loves us and has grace enough for the whole world. God so loved the world Paul writes to Timothy God would have all to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth but he does that one by one He picks us out of the crowd and makes us his own. When we, like Abram, by the power of the Holy Spirit, through faith in Jesus Christ, become one of his own, we are blessed. Blessed with forgiveness and salvation and life but also we are placed into communities, into relationships. First and foremost, of course, a relationship with God, but then relationships with families, co-workers, communities, with everyone 
with whom we share the love of Jesus Christ in whatever way, by our words, by our actions, by our caring, by our concern. We are blessed to be a blessing, just like Abraham. This is a painting from 1566 by the Flemish painter Peter Bruegel. It is called The Census at Bethlehem. But the painter chooses to set that story from Luke chapter 2 of the taxation he chooses to set that in a village in the Netherlands of his own day and age. And I wish the painting was about five times larger so you could see it. It's, it's in a way like a Where's Waldo picture. There's all sorts of things going on. There are people ice skating and having a snowball fight and there's other people working and down in that left hand corner where you seem to see a large crowd and a large building that's the tax office and people are lined up there to pay their taxes but remember this is a story or a painting well it tells a story of Mary and Joseph going to Bethlehem so they're there. Do you see them? They're right in the front center. Joseph is leading Mary. She's sitting on a donkey. There's Mary. Let's focus on her. She is one among many going to the tax office. Just one. But earlier, she has been told by an angel that she has found favor with God. She is, goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth, and Elizabeth says to her, blessed are you among women. She was blessed. She was chosen by God to bear his son, to bring him into this world. So she was blessed to be a blessing. And she gave birth to a son. He was born into the crowd. You see the crowd in that town. He was born into the crowd. It reminds me of John's Christmas story, which is one line. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And I love the message translation, which is the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. He came to bless us. The one came to be a blessing. For all. Today we begin Advent, the time where we celebrate that one who came to bless us, the one who brought God's grace to the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. But Martin Luther, in one of his Christmas sermons, says, All of that is meaningless if we don't ever hear that he was also born just for me, just for you. Christ was born to save the world. Christ was born to save me. God, you see, has a heart 
for each individual, for Abraham, for Mary, for Daniela. And for you and for me, Christ was born for us. Christ was born for you. The last stanza of the Christmas carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem, is a prayer. And I'd like to have you read that prayer with me. But when you get to verse line four, be born, I want you to then change the plural to a singular. Change all the us's that come after that to me. Make it your own. Christ was born for all, but he was born me. Let's pray. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in me today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O come to me, abide with me, our Lord, Emmanuel. God with us, God with you, in Jesus' name, amen. Oh, I want you to think about something, yeah. I, I almost forgot about that. I'm so focused. As you celebrate this Christmas, you know, we celebrate in so many different ways, with so many different people. Um, what, in your celebration this next month, what is it that you really look forward to? What is it that really stands out? And maybe even think about why does that stand out? Of all the things you do, why does one thing kind of stand out? And then, a little more intimately. Throughout December, we have so many opportunities to worship this one who came to bless each one of us. What is it in your Christmas worship, your Advent worship, that stands out to you? And why? Think about those things for a moment. God bless.